Hello and welcome to your other weekly podcast here on Four Lads Had a Dream. My name's Andrew and I'm joined this week by three of my very favourite podders, Kenny, Stevie and Shona. Um, we obviously have the Birmingham game to look back on, uh, which I'm sure will be delightful fun. And then we have plenty of news about potential incomings and potential outgoings with Rangers. But Kenny, let's go ahead and uh, rip the band-aid off straight away. We watched a fairly, well, not fairly, just a poor performance uh, of Rangers versus Birmingham. Um, two goals from them. Uh, Scott Wright, a goal to save some of our respectability, although the fact that it was Scott Wright getting it, I'm not sure lends too much credibility to that. Um, again, standard caveats, it's a preseason game. This is a makeshift team. I don't think this is what our first team lineup is likely to be, or at least I would hope not to be the case. Uh, against Hearts, um, it was a lot of the youth team who didn't start against Man U, and we knew that was going to be the case, but nonetheless, um, pretty dispiriting to watch what appeared to be a total lack of um, a plan, to be honest. Yeah, I think the, the first half in particular I thought was a horrible watch. I mean, it's the only way to describe it. We were lucky it was only 2 nothing at half time. Um, it's difficult to be too critical of the young kids. Right, I, I'm I'm going to say that before I go on one, if you like. But um, thirteen youth team players in a, a, you know in that squad last night, and none of them done themselves any favours, you know. And it kind of begs the question, you know, or made me beg that question last night about our academy. Our academy is not really producing at the minute. But um, back to the game. Look, it was, the, you know, the, there was no cohesion. There was no no real proof of patterns of play or you know, improvement or fitness or anything last night, I thought. Uh, in fact, I thought we looked leggy. I think it's a term we've used a couple of times and we used it last season. And I'll go back to what Stevie's been, you know, harking on about the, the last couple of weeks, you know, about pre-season and yes, it is only preseason, but you you do have to see progress. You've got to see what what we're trying to do. And for a long time last night, I I, I just had no clue what we were trying to do. I, the back the back four is a pretty much a makeshift and brand new back four. The midfield is far too easy to play through. I thought Connor Barron came on and and made a difference actually there in yep. showing things up. Um, Cyril Dessers uh, again he's missed three really decent chances last night um, and yeah it's a lovely wee flick for his assist for Scott Wright but the, the goal itself is a cracking goal we'll give them fair credit for that it was a cracking goal but yeah I mean Birmingham are a, they're a league one side you know they get relegated last season they went in a free fall you know the second half of last season and they've got plenty of money and they've spent a, a fair, fair few quid in the summer but at the same time I'm expecting Rangers to perform a hell of a lot better than that Andrew uh, and you know Stevie and Shore they'll give you a better insight because I was only watching it on TV but I, I wasn't impressed at all last night and it just brings me to that point where we're we're nine, ten days before the start of the season and I've got more questions than answers and I think yeah. everybody else is the same, to be honest, but I'll pass it over from there. Yeah, I mean, Stevie, in terms of what Kenny's saying there, you know, we're, and as we've said in the past, we're looking for improvements through these pre-season games. The fact is, over the past two games, we've managed to score a goal in 180 minutes of football, uh, if you can call it football. And... Um, it, it's quite dispiriting, in all honesty, to, to see the state of our squad as it is right now. We're seeing players feature who we know are likely to not be there um, come the end of the transfer window. I mean, what was your takeaway from the game, mate? Um, <clears throat> biggest takeaways is that I don't think we look fit. I think Tavernier and Danilo in particular are absolutely miles away, which is worrying. Um, you know, there's been a lot said about James Tavernier this summer. I don't think we need to go over that, but you know, you take that as being he's part of the squad and he's here and he's a captain. Well, he's miles away. Um, 
Other things that really disappointed me, Andrew, is a number of times players just seemed to give up. There was a real lack of, in, in the first half I'm talking about, so there was a real lack of effort. The manager acknowledged that afterwards, um, seeing Rabbi Matondo stopping dead several times. He was hooked at half-time. Alex Lowry, for a boy given an opportunity, just didn't look interested. I thought his attitude was, was honking, to be quite honest. And I like Alex, but just the whole kind of, you can only judge what you're seeing. And what I saw was somebody that maybe just couldn't quite be arsed being out there. So that's certainly how it looked. You know, um, midfield, I don't think really worked. Diamandi just, and and McKinnon never really got a hold of it. And again, look, here's the old adage. I, I talked about this on Saturday. See, when you get overrun by three, so many runners just not getting tracked, so many shots at the edge of your box that deflected just wide and whizzed just past. You know, when you said it was lucky it was 2-0 at half time, we were lucky. We missed a couple of chances ourselves, right? We maybe could have got two, three, for Birmingham's five or six, if we're being brutally honest, if we had taken each other's chances, because we had a few, we had Red Van, um, I think Matondo went through, um, Lowry had a shot, uh, he could have done better with, McCausland had a chip, you know, so we had half opportunities, and I just thought we were wasteful. At the back, I thought Enciala did okay, clearance-wise, he made a lot of good clearances, but I thought he rushed towards the ball quite a few times and he got caught out of position. Like, he would chase the ball and they would just play it in and round and behind him, similar to what Ben Davies did a wee bit. So he's, he's pressing on when he shouldn't. Um, Red Van got 2-1 to one behind him every single time because Matondo didn't track back and the boy Ethan Laird was really quite promising. So, yeah, I mean, look, basic stuff. And, and the issue I've got is we, we seem to be for a formation, we seem to be pulled apart so easily and we seem to be played out and round and through so quickly and so easily. And I think that's a, a real issue. There's no rigidness to that formation at all. It just gets pulled apart. And we see mm -hmm. no Nana, you know, pass it through six people to get to Hannibal, to, to for him to turn and go on the run on Saturday. And we, and we were seeing similar passing last night. I mean... You know, there was several times last night where nobody tracked the runners. That big boy, I think they were number 25. I think that's right, he, from midfield. And he was sitting and he realised, I've got the freedom of the world here. And he kept running and running and running. And he was getting opportunities. So just disappointing, Andrew. I think there's a real lack of, dare I say it, shape. There's a lack of strategy. I don't think they understand what the press is. I'm not sure they're getting taught what the press is. And it's difficult to understand. And yeah, look, there was loads of first team players missing last night. And the caveat is it's a friendly and we understand that completely. And that's a makeshift side and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's so bad at this minute in time to have any positivity because what we've basically done is we've we've told that squad, you know, by own admission, Jack Bolton's the only one that's not getting sold. So the rest of these are up for grabs. And they're playing like a, guy, a bunch of guys that, not really going to be here for much longer. So, and then obviously you had last night's news, which we'll come to. So the whole thing, Andrew, it's just, it's a little bit disjointed. It's a little bit disheartening to try to watch. And it looks like there's a real lack of cohesion and spirit and strategy and all those kind of stupid words you would throw in for, for buzzwords when players are just playing a little bit shite. And that's the honest truth. Like, it looks, no, it looks terrible, doesn't it? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, you can use all the buzzwords you like. The fact is, it was a very poor game of football on our behalf. Um, Shona, I mean, from from your perspective, you know, and touching on what Stevie said, the lack of at least what appears to be strategy or a style of play or or indeed even just doing the basics right at the press and the uh, the defensive blocks, we don't appear to be doing any of those particularly well. Um, what was your take on the game? I think my take in the game is pretty just much what um, Stevie just reiterated there. I think there's a few players that were not fit, like the likes of Danilo and Tav. I thought if you're going to come from that game and your best attacker on the pitch at once again is Scott Wright, somebody else that's up for sale, it's quite worrying. I think uh, that the press was not very good from the front front line. I thought um, Matondo, Danilo, McCausland was really, really poor. Lowry especially, his attitude. I think there was a amount of times that Lowry tried to get the ball Tried to take on a few players, lost lost possession, didn't even track back, didn't even wasn't didn't look even, even that interested, like Stevie said. Midfield didn't work for me. 
And like, yeah, like uh, Tavern uh, Red Fan got quiet quite a bit. I think uh, Raphael a wee bit sorry for Red Fan because he was two and one most times against the boy Ethan Laird. And Ethan Laird was able to get to the byline, cross it pretty much a, a, a straightforward pass across the front line. And obviously the boy put the ball in the back of the net. But I think the biggest take for me from the game was the style of play. I think uh, the amount of times I think I said during the game, we got when we did have possession. We weren't doing anything with it and it was coming back to that kind of old style where we're passing it back the way, putting pressure on us, do you know that way? And we just didn't have something, somebody there to just, you know what, just do something a wee bit different, hold, put the ball up top, put long balls forward, or even just try something a wee bit different. I think there was times where obviously King managed to get the ball, took too, too, too many touches, that's what, that's what I felt like yesterday, just took too many touches when people were in space, there was that opportunity just to try something a wee bit different. And uh, yeah, I think uh, overall, I think it was a style of play for me that, that kind of is a wee bit worrying. I think we got better in the second half. Obviously, when a few players came on, I think NCL did okay as well. Like like Stevie said, I think he was a wee bit rash into the challenges, but he did make a mistake and he made up for his own mistake as well at the same time. So um, I thought Balligan, after he got a wee bit of a knock, he didn't look, quite look the same. I thought he kind of looked a bit leggy. And yeah, I just think that overall, I think until the, the guy, the, um, Scott Wright and Dacers, obviously Dacers, but Again, was very, very poor. Had a couple of opportunities. I think the one with the, the law, but he probably should have played it along uh, the ground. And it was it was a simple one. But apart from that, there wasn't really much to take from it. I think what, what I noticed from them, that they had more clear-cut chances than us. I think ours were kind of half-hearted chances. I think there was one with McCausland who probably should have taken a shot from outside the box. What does he do? He tries to pick a pass to Danilo. Doesn't quite come off. Ends up at Lowry. Lowry has a rash shot. Same with the, the quick fr- uh, throw in from Red Van to, to Lowry. Again, really nice shot, but it was curling wide. So, um, but yeah, I think Birmingham probably should have put us um, to bed in that first half. They could have had a, probably could have been up four or five nil, to be honest with you. So, to take a goal from that was probably the only positive. And I think it was a really, really good goal. I thought it was a lovely flick on from Dacers to Scott Wright. And Scott Wright, obviously, but we should be asking for Scott Wright to, to bail us out of these games at this moment in time. So, yeah, I think. Uh, Obviously, we will come to it, but it's clear to see that we really need attackers in at this at this moment in time. I think, yeah, OK, defensive options. If somebody like Golson Lees or whatever, maybe we could possibly bring in a centre-back, but it's imperative that Niles Coppin and, and the, obviously Clermont are, need to get in attackers soon as. We need somebody that's going to hold the ball up, um, and obviously we'll go into the links in a minute. But, yeah, I think overall it was just really, really disappointing pre-season overall. I think we wanted to see a style of play. We wanted to see things from set pieces. I think there was a time when we did get a free kick. I think it was Ridfan that took it. It went straight out, do you know, that way. So it's just, it's 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 small things, but obviously it's, it, it matters because obviously we're not taking these opportunities. So yeah, very disappointing. Hard to take really any positives. And I think if you're only positives from the game, I probably Connor Barron, Enciala and uh, Scott Wright. Um, it's, it's quite worrying. But I thought uh, Connor Barron, when he came on, I thought um, some of the times, I don't know if any of you guys seen it, obviously watching it on TV, but I could see him trying to calm everybody down, trying to dictate play, trying to tell everybody how to, what, what to do. And if you're getting a guy in at that age that's telling the older guys what to do, or even some of the younger guys, it should already be drilled into their heads. So it was a bit, a bit concerning at times, but uh, look, it is pre-season and I hope that this does not continue on into obviously the, the Hearts game, which is a week on Saturday, isn't it? So um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see what, what performance they put in against Standard Liege because I think uh, Standard Liege are going to have to, uh, not Standard Liege, it's Union Berlin, sorry guys, Union Berlin at the weekend, I think we're going to have to see a far better performance against them on Saturday so we shall see Andrew, can I just quickly add, see one of the most disappointing things for me last night mm-hmm. is the amount of 50-50s right, we went into and didn't win. And Tall Connor Barron was the only one that was putting himself in there full-heartedly. And, and I don't expect us to win every single tackle, but here's a here's a one that will point to. See the second goal, the boy in the wing, I think it was Ethan Laird, I think it's tackled and goes down, right? And we all stop. He's got time to get up, take a touch, take an hour touch, and then pass it to a boy who then is in miles of space, nobody close to him, who rolls it in. And that was symptomatic of, of what Shona said was right. Like, Alex Lowry losing the ball, doesn't track back. Rabbi Matondo mm-hmm. stopping dead. I mean, just stopping. And then you've got two V1s at, at left back. Ridvan, you know, is marking his guy. But there's a guy going wide, high and wide, the, the fullback. And nobody's tracking, nobody's doing anything. So, and and to be fair to him, Ross McCausland didn't have the best game, but did at least do that on the right-hand side and try and protect. And, 
that's just basic stuff. Like if we're having to teach people to win 50-50s or more worryingly, their heart's not in it, then we can't, that can't be fixed overnight. You know, that's just players that are resigned to not having a future at this football club. So there was a lot of worrying little moments in a game where, you know, funnily enough, talking about Desser's chances, you know, as Kenny says, he could have got three in the second half. You know, and we could end it up with a fair few goals last night ourselves. So it was what it was, but it's the little bits, Andrew, that worry me. The, the lack of tackles, the lack of press, the lack of shape, how easily we're disjointed by just a couple of passes and stuff like that. It needs, look, it needs a drastic uplift. It'll probably only come with better players, but, you know, I don't blame people that are starting to question, you know, bigger things and bigger issues. And if we're going to throw money at this to try and fix this, you know, we better hope that it is just the personnel and not bigger issues because we're now facing the same issues as we were last summer when we gave the keys to Michael Beale and watched him drive it into a wall. You know, there's a potential for this whole horrible scenario and the worst case is just to repeat itself and we're sitting in six months going, need to clear out the guys that they brought in. So yeah. this is horrible and, and we need this to work. And the only way it's going to work is by getting better players in. And we have to hope that the better players are the right ones. Otherwise, you know, history is repeating itself once more. That's a worry for me. Sorry. I think the the whole issue is, is, is coming from... The whole, the, whole, the whole issue is coming from the very top, Stevie. There's just a lack of leadership, leadership anywhere by the looks of things. I, I don't know if... You 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 you're in the press conferences, guys. You 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 might say, but his body language, Clement's body language, just seems slightly different to me already. And I don't know if that's the case. I'm I'm actually asking, but it just even his tone and things like that seems slightly different. Um, there's there's something going on in there, I think, because the lack of cohesion from middle to front. You know, and that you know, it is a, a makeshift back four, so I'm kind of making allowances for that. But there, there's no, there's no unity in that team, if you know what I mean. Look, the the arse doesn't know what the elbow's doing, is the best way I could describe that. It genuinely doesn't, and it's really quite clear. I think that you can see that. Um, and I'm I'm a little bit like Stevie there as well, where I ju- I just feel sometimes that I'm looking at it and I think, you know, there's. At this minute in time, we need a centre half, we need a number six, we need a number ten, we need a, another left winger probably, we need another right winger, we need probably two strikers. It's right through the spine of our team, is, there's nothing there um, that, make, that, that fills you with any confidence. And, you know, you've alluded to it again, Stevie, that we, we are in a situation where there's so many people um, with the futures up in the air, it's not helping. And again, I will reiterate this. That comes to the very top. Uh, you know, we're, we're five weeks into this transfer window and not one guy's left yet when it was imperative that we get guys out the door. So that's my kind of feeling on it. You know, with everything, I think it's the mess that we are in is coming from there. Uh, so yeah, moving on from the game then, uh, which is always a delight, obviously, to talk to you guys. It's uh, just just happiness and joy right now. Um, let's uh, let's look at you know some more exciting stuff. Uh, we've got some, uh, I, I think, fairly concrete noises coming out that Vasa Cherny will be joining us. Um, Shona, I know that you have, of course, all of the stats prepared. Um, but um, he's coming into us from Wolfsburg, uh, twenty six. Again, something that would hopefully um, fit the billing. Uh, so yeah, let's know. Uh, let's know his inside leg measurement and everything else, Shona. Yeah, I'll just go through and then I'll just ask for the guy's opinion. As I say, I'm not not very clued up on this guy too much. So he's 26 years of age. He's left footed. He's a right winger. Going to Wolfsburg for around eight million euros. He's currently valued about seven point three, which is about six one six point one million pounds. He played at the Euros for the Czech Republic. I think he only had one appearance. Um, he was quite decent in the qualification rounds. Played five games, started four, scoring three goals. 
Last season, he had 22 appearances, four goals, and expected XG was 2.2, so obviously over-exceeded his, his, his XG. He scored all four goals from inside the box. Uh, his strengths are high pressing and playmaking. His attributes are, his attacking attributes are 73%, technical ability 70%, and creativity 69%. And his stats are that passing accuracy is 75%, own half 79%, opposition 67%. Long balls, 45, and chip passes, 61%. So, like I said, don't really know too much about him, apart from, obviously, when I played football manager. So, uh, like, I think I'll leave it over to the guys to have their opinion on this boy. So, but, yeah, it looks like uh, this boy might be coming in on a loan. Well, if we're talking football manager, then there's only one person I can go to next. Uh, Stevie, uh, what do you make of this guy? Well, listen, he's somebody that we need, don't we? A right-sided winger, my word. It's like Christmas time, isn't it? I mean, Kenny, I remember we had here and we were talking about what the right side <laughs> winger my man, so it's been that long. Um, obviously, this boy does come in with a lovely head of hair himself, so immediately he's going to be part of me and Kenny's little group that we've got. Top team. You know what I mean? So, um, in all seriousness, he's a right-sided winger, isn't he? He's left-footed, which is interesting. As Shona says, he does, he is, you know, kind of quick press and stuff like that, which we're obviously trying to do, so... I think he's the first of what will be three or four arriving over the next couple of weeks is my hope. I think things are finally moving, Andrew, in and out. Now, we've said this mm -hmm. before. Caveat is we've said that two weeks ago, three weeks ago, everything else, and we've been sitting waiting for it. Is this <laughs> finally it? I think hopefully it might be. So there is that. There's a few that we know that are closer to the door, and the links are strong to others, which we'll come to as well. So those those are links that seem a wee bit wild, but don't seem to be going away as well. So, but this one, we think it's done. Looking at a Friday announcement, it looks like, doesn't it? So a loan deal. There might be a there might be a wee loan to to do it, like as in you know ob obligation to buy and stuff like that, like the the Cortez and Diamandi deals and things. So that's an interesting one. Um, it's just it's it's exciting. I don't think any of us can claim to know very much about him. We've certainly heard the name. We've seen, you know, goals and in internationals and stuff. So yeah, he scored obviously in Glasgow before with Ajax. So he knows what's what's required as well from from that side of the the coin as well. So um, Kenny, it's a right winger, mate. You know, and he's bald, mate. It's great. Makes me feel well. He's obviously going to be elite already. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, listen, I, I'll talk about what something that Shona said. I think it was last week about the fullbacks and the wingers and how Philip Clement likes to invert them. And it's noticeable that Cortez is you know, he wants to cut inside. He's not you're talking about Cherney want to cut inside. The fullbacks want to come into the middle of the pitch. Um again that all helps with the press as well, which is clearly not working. Um I, I I'm like you guys, I don't know huge amounts about this guy. I do know the name. Um uh, I know he, I think he started at Ajax, didn't he? He was in the Ajax youth system there. Um, started there, moved on. Um, but I, I, I'm being realistic. I, the Where I know him from more is the Czech Republic national team. I think I've seen him a couple of times because Scotland have played them. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll have seen him in there. But, but look, I... I don't know much about the guy, but if you're get, if you're if you're at the you know at Ajax and you're getting a move to the Bundesliga, you're you're a decent player. You have to be a decent player. And the one thing I have noticed with the, the couple of wee videos that I, I scanned over the last couple of days, he's really fast. He is proper fast. So again, it's something that you know Clement and Coppin are obviously identifying as we need pace in that team. Um, Looking forward to seeing the guy, looking forward to seeing what he can bring, but I'll not pretend that I know loads about him because I, I genuinely don't. But welcome aboard. I think the main thing is, Kenny, it looks like we're trying to sign some quality first teamers. Um, mm -hmm. That's just that's good news inherently by itself. Um, we, we've also been linked, I think, uh, continually, still with uh, Morgan Whitaker. I don't think those rumours are going away. Uh, and Wakehorst as well. So, I mean, Kenny, I'll stay with you initially, but up to the guys. I mean, again, it's promising that we are still being linked with these players, but I think we're sort of, as Stevie's touched on, we're just impatient to see some of these get over the line and actually happen. Well, the Whitaker one just keeps persisting, doesn't it? Um, 
and I, I, I'm, I just don't know how to take that. I, 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 I'm quite flabbergasted, I think is the way I would put it. I, I don't see as... I didn't see us going back in for that that lad when he did such a good season in the championship yep. last year, uh, and the money that it's going to cost. So we'll wait and see when that happens. But he is a fine player. He is he is a very decent young player. Uh, as for Vegas, oh, he'd run a mock up here. He would absolutely terrorise centre halves up here. If he's coming, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> not the listen. He's just a big robust almost like a target man but he's listen he's a lot better in, on the ground than he's, he's given credit for um, he's a good player he is dare I say it pretty much tailor made for, for the, the, the Scottish Premier League you know in terms of te- you know ripping it up terrorising the place he genuinely I do, do genuinely think that, that if if that lad was to come and stay fit uh, you, you would be looking at a yeah, uh, Kenny, I heard the the fucking devil's um, caveat in there. If we can keep him fit, <laughs> if and... we can keep him fit. Well, that's just a, that's just <laughs> not I mean, in every I'm, Ranger supporter. Exactly, isn't it? yeah. Expect that to happen, but I have little look, PTSD flashbacks whenever I hear that phrase. Now you know, yeah, I'm just but, seeing images but, of Ryan Jack and Kamar Roof flashing through my head again. You know, oh. but nonetheless, <laughs> can I just can I just say something in there? We got a lot of comments on our last pod about talking about Morgan Whitaker and the potential deal. This is how it works. You know, things are mentioned in papers, things are speculated upon, and then we'll discuss it. A lot of it is hypothetical conversation. Shona hypothetically said, if we've got the money to go out there and sign this guy, you know, go and do it. And she was getting people saying, in what world do we have that money? Well, it's hypothetical. It's in the papers. It's getting discussed. We're going to discuss it. Now, it's wild. Like I know, but we're all thinking that seven million for this boy, eight million, whatever it is, is is mental. But a lot of people are saying this might be some truth to it. So if we're going to discuss it, we're going to discuss it, and it's hypothetical. Nothing's getting discussed as if it's going to happen. So Morgan Whitaker is a guy that you know Kenny spent the whole summer calling Kenny McLean, Kenny Miller, didn't he? So I'm going to spend the whole of mine calling Morgan Whitaker, Stephen Whitaker, am I? So um, that's going to be interesting. And then, look, Whitaker, 50 games, I think, 20 goals, nine assists, unbelievable kind of pace and all that trickery and stuff like that. You know, you get Cherney, you get him, you get Cortez on their game, and all of a sudden the whole landscape of this football team changes, Baron Diamandi. You know, maybe you get another midfielder and we're linked strongly with Hannibal today. We're still linked with Juan Jordan, aren't we? So the names are coming, Andrew. And it's no coincidence that the names are still floating about in the same context as players are now almost about to fire out the door. So it's going to be interesting. Um, on Vout Veghorst, listen, it's a, it's a funny one, isn't it? Because that would almost be ridiculous levels of signing because he's just a big lump, right? And he'll just stay in the box, <laughs> right? And he'll just pin defenders in. He'll keep them in there, but he'll actually do something that we don't have at the moment. He'll hold it up. He's got strength. He's got a touch. I don't think he's got much pace. I don't think he's got much press about him. But if you're bringing in three guys, right? And here's my thinking, and I'm only like thinking just like everybody else. If you're bringing in three pacey guys and a big guy suddenly is going to hold it up and play off, head the ball, finish the ball. So he's going to feed off them, but he's also going to bring them into play. Now, this is Vout Veghorst, I think is a wild speculated name, right? But it doesn't mean we can't talk about it. It doesn't mean we can't speculate just like everybody else is. And that's something that won't go away. You know, so it's going to be, it's, do you know what? It's at least fun to be linked with some fun names after what's been a miserably quiet few weeks. We've done podcasts, folks, where we've not had anything to talk about and we've barely managed to get through it and you've listened to us talk nonsense. So it's nice to be able to chuck in a few names and things like that. Now, if it happened, great. But, you know, as I said, there's Hannibal being flung in today as well. So, you know, there's lots of things. And I'd probably like him just to come just for the amount of memes and fun we could have with his name. Imagine when we played Aberdeen, if we were to beat Aberdeen, we could have a silence of the lambs, you know, <laughs> Hannibal and all that kind of stuff. Like, there would be so much. 
nonsense to talk about. So it was funny, Andrew, actually, because before I hand it over to Shona on Veghorst and Whitaker and Hannibal and stuff like that, um, I was speaking on Rangers Review on Monday and I actually said, I was watching Man United and I was looking at guys like Hannibal and I was said I would take him on loan because he looked miles above what we have. So I'm not saying that Niels Coppin is listening to me, but, you He's know, listening to you. apparently Niels Coppin is listening to me. But uh, <laughs> no, all seriousness, you know, it's nice just to kind of have a chat that's nice. We're not saying any of it's realistic. We're not saying this is going to happen. And yeah, we all think seven million for a boy is absolutely crazy as well. So let's just see what happens. We're allowed to discuss it. We're allowed to kind of spitball, aren't we, and have a bit of a giggle and, and mm-hmm. see what's happening. But it would just be it's just nice to have some sort of level of excitement of, of people that are linked with us, that's for sure. Shona will be Shona will have all the info on these guys, I'm sure. But um I know that she's been a massive fan of Morgan Whitaker, isn't she? So um, you've you've advocated for this one for a long time. We heard you speak about it the other day as well. But Vout Veghorst as well. These guys are at least exciting, aren't they? I mean, I, I just like the contrast in analysis that we get. So let no one say we don't cater to all audiences. Shona will give you his expected XG. Steve, you'll tell you he's a big lump of a boy. And I, I mean, that's that's just pitch perfect analysis of Scottish football. You know what I mean, just need Kenny saying he's coming from Ukraine, so obviously be well armed. Um, <laughs> oh, Uruguay, sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, Shona, j- before we get into potential outgoings, uh, yeah, your your thoughts on the names we're being linked with, Whitaker's, uh, you know. Obviously, the the man love their side. Yeah, we'll start on uh, about Weghorst. I think like he's got international experience, hasn't he? He was at the Euros and he's had, he's had, he didn't have a decent one, but he did score a goal, didn't he? So, um, like I think uh, his European qualifiers, he did pretty decent in them. And like obviously, when he was on loan at Hoffenheim, I think he scored all seven goals. Well, he scored seven goals, and obviously, like what Stevie was saying there, talking about him being in the box, and it shows that he's had two from scored two from a header three ways left foot and two ways right foot. So he's obviously one of these guys that can obviously, he's just in and around people causing a bit of problems for defence. I think that's what we need. We need somebody like that kind of type, somebody like when we had Morelos that just hounded defenders all the time. And that's the kind of guy he is. He might not look great on the eye at times, but I tell you something though, he'll, he'll not give up. He'll keep going. I think he didn't have a great loan when he was at Man United at, at the time. So like, but he, he, certainly what he did was, he helped Rashford in his goal scoring record that season as well. So, like I think uh, for me, I think that, that this one, I've, obviously, I think people know who he is. He knows what he's like, what kind of type of player he is. He's going to be good for set pieces as well. That's another thing that we've not got. We've not really got a striker up there that really is great with set pieces. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to if, if the rumours are true about this boy. I think he's only got a year left in his contract with Burnley. So, um, what what that kind of deal is going to be? Is it going to be a loan to buy? Is it going to be? A, I don't really know if it'll be a loan option because obviously, if he's only got a year left in his contract, whether there's something else in that. So, yeah, looking forward to obviously seeing what these kind of rumours come with. But the Morgan Whitaker one for me is an absolute no-brainer. Uh, obviously, when we got linked with him, I think it was the best part of just over a year ago for quite a, a low, considerable amount of money. I think it was around about 1.2, 1.5 million. It's obviously then gone, I think he started off at Swansea, obviously then went on to Plymouth, had a really good loan at Plymouth. And then obviously this season, over just nearly 50 appearances, like, like um, Steve said, with 19 goals and eight assists. Uh, one with his head, I think there's been, what is it, 14 with his left foot and four with his right foot. So, look, he's an all-round kind of attacker. I think he's very pacey. I think he's very skillful in, in the wings. I think he's very um, he's very strong. I think he can score all kind of number of goals. I think I've, I've sent a compilation clip to Stevie just for him to have a look at. And I says, look, this boy is your proper winger type that I would love to have at this rebel club. Um, yeah, it, honestly, like I'm, I'm not. Long, I want to want to go into too much of his stats because obviously we'll discuss that Monday. But I mean, like I've been tightening for this boy for a while, and I think he's he's the type of guy that we really need. To, he's he's never really injury prone either. Um, but it, just about, I think everybody's a bit flabbergasted about the valuation of this boy. So if Rangers do have the money to go and get him, like I said hypothetically, I would go and get him right this right this second. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see with this one. But uh, Morgan Whitaker for me uh, will be a top class signing, and I think uh, yeah, we get a lot of the Rangers fans excited, especially about Wakehorse. I think a lot of them will get excited about that one as well. So um, no, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing hopefully uh, Morgan Whitaker in a Rangers jersey. So I mean, obviously the moves that potentially look to finance this are a couple of outgoings that I think were 
pretty much well confirmed. Uh, the manager saying pre-match uh, that uh, Golton was slated to play during that match, but was announced uh, basically that he had had permission from the manager to go and visit the club that he was uh, looking to sign for. And then not even in the post-match press conference, but post the post-match press conference, uh, as uh, the manager left and then came back in, he announced that Cantwell uh, has asked to be transfer listed. Uh, he's looking to, to leave, uh, which is why he's been playing with the B team. Manager has said that he had offered a position within Rangers. He you know, said that he rated him, that they had a good relationship, but Todd Cantwell has decided uh, that his future lies elsewhere. So. Between the two of them, I think that represents a chunk of wages, Stevie. Um, certainly would go, hopefully along with some transfer fees, uh, a way to funding some of these uh, happy transfers we're talking about. Yeah, so Connor Goldson, by all accounts, although it's not confirmed, that will be confirmed, I think, in the next couple of days he'll he'll go. Um, it's not only the saving or, or the transfer fee. I don't think the transfer fee will be massive, Andrew. I think, you know, maybe, maybe a million or something like that. I'm not sure that it's going to be much more than that. But what it does do with two years of his contract left and a guy that's getting close to 40 grand a week is saving the best part of nearly what 1.7, 1.8 million a year. So that's saving over two years and then a, a transfer fee could turn out to be quite a decent deal for us from somebody that clearly is kind of lost form, lost his place in the team and is not hanging about. Todd Cantwell's situation was was the first time I've ever seen that happen, where a manager would leave a press conference, finish his press conference, then come back in to clarify. Um, so that was interesting, and it was interesting the way he worded it. I expect that at some point Todd Cantwell will have something to say because Todd Cantwell normally has something to say. But what mm. I would say is, you know, if if a player doesn't want to be here, and if the manager then persuades him to stay or tries to persuade him to stay and he still doesn't want to be here, then the right thing is to move him on. You know, Sam Lammers, he said last night that there was almost a, a positive conclusion to that because he's not going to be part of the team. We're seeing, you know, that there's countless teams. You know, I, I see teams getting linked to him for four and a half million euros and stuff like that, which is, which is pretty decent because, you know, two weeks ago it looked like we couldn't loan him, never mind anything else. So if that happens... It's almost like in Football Manager where you add an extra manager and they take over as trans odds for because they seem to be linked with absolutely all our players at the moment. So they're in for him. You know, there's obviously interest from Holland. So we think that will speed up Yanis Hadji's agent ever closer to the exit door. So Cantwell, Goldson, Hadji, Lammers. It's a hell of a lot of money a week, Andrew. You know what I mean? And it's no coincidence to me that these guys are all starting and like negotiations are starting to happen and players are being linked with coming in. There's been a lot said about us not having money and things like that. I think we probably do have money. I think the squad's just absolutely bloated and the wage bill's too high and it's massive. So it's going to be an interesting few weeks. Hopefully, finally, things are starting to move. But, you know, Cantwell, Hadji, Lammers, thanks for your time. Connor Goldson deserves a wee bit more respect, in my opinion. He's He's played... You know, a remarkable amount. I think he missed six games in his first four seasons here. Part of the team that went to the Europa League final. Um, part of the team that brought in 55. You know, Conor Goldson was the rock of that season. Everything was built around him. It was him and Hollander or him and Balogun. You know, he was just, he was exceptional. And yeah, he's went off the boil, right? And he's had moments, he's had clangers and stuff like that. This season, he didn't really recover. And it's a sign of a body that's maybe for six or seven years with us went through the absolute ringer. But I think he deserves the respect and our thanks for his efforts as, as he leaves, just as James Tavernier might, however that progresses over the next few weeks. But um, Conor Goldson goes with my thanks and, and best wishes. I've not always been his biggest pal, not always been his biggest supporter in terms of form and stuff like that. I've always supported him, but what I mean is there's been times where I think he's really been off the boil and things like that. But you know, um, I think it's the right thing to do. I think he's one of many. So, you know, thanks, Conor Goldson, for your efforts and good luck wherever you're going next. Yep. Um, Joe, your thoughts on uh, on these two and, as uh, Stevie says, potentially others heading out the door? 
Yeah, I think uh, with uh, Conor Wilson, I've always said this before, like um, he goes with my best wishes. I think he's been, like uh, Stevie said, he's been a rock in this team. I think he's done well. I think uh, you've got to thank the lad for everything that he's done for this football club, but I've just not been his biggest fan as, as, a, as a defender. I just didn't think he was great. Um, but look, you've got to, the main appearances he's made, the fact that he's never really been that, apart from the injury that he got, obviously, throughout the Champions League. Apart from that one, he really hasn't been really injured at this football club with the amount of games that he's had. So, look, yeah, it goes with my best wishes. Like I said, I think it's just time for him to move on and into this football club. As for Todd Cantwell, I've always kind of felt Todd Cantwell's not really hit the heights that he wanted to hit at when he was at Rangers. I think he's got a lot of skill. Um, but, yeah, he's just not been consistent enough. I think he had a really good run. I think it was around about the January time between when he came back from his injury. He went on a run, I think it was about five or six games. We had a few assists and a few goals, and he looked like he was going to kick on from there. Didn't really like to kick on. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think he's been a bit of an enigma with the fans. I think a lot of the younger kids like him. I think um, with his TikToks and the obviously what he does with, with celebrations, and I get it because my nephews absolutely adore Todd Cantwell. They absolutely do love him. I do like him as a footballer as well, but I think he's just going to, He's a bit kind of like Marmite, you're going to like him, you're going to hate him, isn't it? And I think we're maybe the older generation that just don't really get the whole social media thing. I think sometimes I do feel sorry for him. I don't think that the, the abuse that he's taken recently as well with all this has been quite right. But look, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And uh, look, I wish Todd Cantwell all the best. And if you're going to get the best part, maybe three, four, five million pound, which is obviously the rumours at this moment in time. I'm not just saying that he's going to, that's the kind of money. But if you're going to get that money and reinvest it in the likes of maybe somebody like a Whitaker or a Weghorst or somebody else that's in here, I think you're you're all for it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Todd Cantwell just probably hasn't hit the heights that everyone expected to. There's definitely, he's got some amount of ability. I'm not too sure about his relationship with Clement, I'm not I'm not not really buying that one. I don't think they actually got on too well, but look if you've got to see what you've got to believe what the manager says. But um yeah, for me, Connor Golson, look, he's he's done well at this football club. He's had so many appearances. I think as well with Connor Golson, he's got to realise that when when he had the heart condition, Rangers obviously managed to bring him in. He managed to get I don't know about you, but I think he probably didn't realise at that moment in time he would probably have this prolonged career as a footballer. So look, I think you've got to kinda of, Wish him well, and uh, look, hope he does all the best when he moves on. So, but yeah, uh, it's it's good that we're we're now getting the ball rolling and getting a lot of these guys off the transfer uh, of the the wage bill and, and obviously get some money in for the transfer. So, look, yeah, wish them all the best. But yeah, look, um, looking forward to kind of reinvesting that money into the squad. Can't help Change but feel punches. attacked when Shona said like old guys who don't realise about social media and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> I mean, Stevie, I, I, you stole my intro line for Kenny there. Cause, cause, yeah. like, speaking of older fans mm. who maybe don't quite understand social media, Kenny, what are your thoughts? You know, <sighs> I'm, I'm <scared>. <laughs> <laughs> older generation. Sorry. Nah, Shona, you're right. It's all. It's you old. know, I heard from YouTube heard that these people, four don't like each other that much. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I've. I've I'll say right away, I don't have an issue with footballers using social media um, at all. Actually, I, I, it doesn't bother me, uh, but I can see why it would bother a manager, if you know what I mean. Uh, sometimes it, it just causes you more problems, you know, as a manager than <clears throat> you, you you would want to deal with. But listen, on Conor Goldson, We've said this, you know, we're kind of going over old ground again, you know, because it's been speculation all summer. But he'll go with my very best wishes. Um, he's done a he's done a good job for us, and I know he is not flavour of the month at the minute, and we all know that, and we all know why. And his form has dropped off a cliff, and uh, I, I tend to agree with both Stevie and Sean in terms of you know his career here. It, I think Tavernier's in the same bracket, you know, see, what, and I've, again, I've said this over the summer, but when you're playing 50, 60 games a season, every single season, you, you, you just, your body just can't take that. Uh, as you get older, it, it becomes a thing, a proper, uh, the healing process just takes longer. It's that simple. Um, so he'll go with my best wishes if he does move on. Uh, we're not quite sure, no, you know, where he is off to do. Maybe hints that it's a championship club, perhaps. But um, as for Todd Con Cantwell, um, I'm not sure what to make of Todd Cantwell now. Um, 
the first four or five months he was here, I thought he, he, he just, he was electric. Actually, I thought he was absolutely fantastic. But Michael Beale did give him that free role that he clearly wants. Uh, whereas Clement's structure, you know, or attempted structure, you know, having watched last night, is to be much more rigid in that particular position, I think. Uh, and Todd Campbell's not going to do that. You've seen it right when he got here. You know, 35 minutes and hooked off against uh, Limassol, wasn't it, I think? Uh, because he, he was told to stay out wide and he just wouldn't do it. So, y you know, the, Shona's a wee bit, you know, she's probably a wee bit right in what she says about Clement and and Todd Cantwell. It, it might be... A, and I, I probably think they genuinely probably do get on all right, but there's a battle of wills when it comes to the, on the football pitch. And it's, I know better than you and, you know, how to play my game. And Clement says, well, I know how to build a team better than you do. So, you know, it's just a stalemate, I think. And listen, he, he, the one thing I would say about Todd Cantwell is that in the main, he gave us everything. There was times towards the end there when I thought he was clearly not fit. Um, and playing through a bit of pain, I thought, at times that... You know, he couldn't quite give you everything that you, you know you'd want to see from him. But again, listen, he's not he's not been here long enough uh, to overly judge him. Strangely, I, I think he's he's a very fine football player, and he'll do a, yep. a cracking job for a, for a team who does have a manager that will allow him to go and express express himself the way he wants to. And if he can get that, uh, good luck to him. He goes yep. again. He'll go with my best wishes. I think that's absolutely fair, Kenny. Um, as it stands, I mean, none of these are confirmed, but obviously stay with four lads uh, and we will keep you fully up to date. Uh, as ever, it's always a pleasure to talk to all of you, lovely people as well. Uh, Kenny, always a pleasure, mate. No, thank you, Andrew. Thanks, guys. That was good fun. And we'll wait and see who gets attacked in the comments tonight then, shall we? Yep. Uh, Shona, always a good laugh, pal. Yeah, just looking forward to hopefully now some decent signings coming across. So hopefully by Monday we might have some good transfer news to talk about. So hopefully fingers so, crossed. Hopefully so. Uh, and finally, Stevie, again, mate, always a pleasure. Yeah, thanks everyone for all your feedback and um, comments and follows and everything. You know, the pod's doing it incredibly well, and I think ten thousand people listen to our last one, which is nonsense. It really is. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I think, you know, some people, I think some people get it. This is supposed to be four friends talking like we would do down at a pub or a restaurant or just hypothetically chatting away about Rangers, a club that we all love. So, um, yeah, absolutely looking forward to more next week. And as Shona says, you know, hopefully some signings and hopefully this is the start of some movement, Andrew. This squad needs fresh and Philip Clement. You know, he needs to he needs those bodies in and we need to start seeing something. So Union Berlin on, on Saturday, you know, it's gonna be difficult, but maybe we'll we'll start to see bits and bobs. That's all we can really hope for. It's gonna be a, a difficult tie and especially with a squad that's still building up and, and still got a long way to go before that's settled. So, you know, I've always said, Andrew, that um I really appreciate everyone that watches and comments and that. But just remember, folks, when we do talk about stuff, it's no, we're not saying everything definite. We're not talking about everything being done deals and everything like that. We're talking about things that are relevant and in discussion. So thanks for joining us. Much appreciated. Yep, kind of said it by it myself. So um, yeah, so we talk to you again, folks. Bye for now. Four Lads Podcast is sponsored by Rhino Express, Clydeview Joinery, Athol Industrial Solutions Limited and CSD Air Conditioning along with Art of Gold. Thank you for listening or watching the podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs>